Good morning, and uh, we are thrilled again to welcome you to our 11 o'clock service here at Harrow International Christian Centre. As you know, we are still in lockdown, uh, and although things are being eased, we are still not able to meet in our building in Harrow. But nevertheless, God is using our production and our messages to go out in various places around the world as well as our own nation. So God is doing unique things in these days and uh, he will perform everything that he has scheduled right on time in this generation. Thanks be to God. Well, our prayers that you will be blessed, that you will be uh, aware of Christ in your home, right where you are sitting, watching this on your screen. And our desire as a church, as a fellowship, and especially as a leadership, is that you will be edified in your heart, in your mind. That you will not only gain knowledge of the Word of God, but that deep transformation will happen in our hearts as we encounter Christ together this morning. It is so important that when we, the church, gather in his name, that we make sure we do what he has called us to do. And what God calls us to do is to worship him. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength and with all your soul. And we express that as we worship and adore him. So we're going to take some time to do just that as Steve and Elliot and our worship team lead us before the throne of grace. Just quieten your heart, still your heart. Let everything that has troubled you this week be laid aside. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. Let there come in you a song of praise and joy. Let celebration and let the victory of Jesus Fill your heart with joy as we sing our praises and express our love to him today. May Jesus be glorified and him alone. Amen. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. In every chain, as broken hearts declare His praise, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lion. The Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world His blood breaks the chains Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Every knee will bow before Him Whoa. Way before the King of Kings, the God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For whom can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battle. Every knee will bow before Him Our God is the Lamb The Lamb that was slain For the sins of the world His blood breaks the chains Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Every knee will bow Stop the Lord Almighty Who can
can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Sing it over the battle. Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the lamb, the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the lamb. For the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Oh. My dear children. I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands, is a liar. And the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live just as Jesus did. Dear friends, I am not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. The old command is the message you have heard. Yet I am writing you a new command. Its truth is in him and in you, because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. I am writing to you, dear children, because you ha your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, dear children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God lives in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Good morning. As we come to this time of prayer, let me just remind you of what it says in Romans 12, 11. It says, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. 
So let's close your eyes for a moment. Don't listen to the people around you. Make this a moment and a time that you enter the halls of the kingdom of God. And as we come boldly into his presence, just begin to raise up praise and thanksgiving. Begin to thank him for his kindness and his goodness. Begin to thank him for his week this week and how he has brought us through. Begin to thank him for your family and your friends, your siblings, your children, your parents, your enemies. Begin to thank him for the provision that he's given you, the food and the clothes that he's given us. Begin to thank him for the for our jobs and thank him for the fact that he is our provider and some of us who are waiting for jobs. Begin to thank him in faith that he will open those doors for us because if he looks after the birds in the air, how much more are we valuable? Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning And we want to thank you for all of those things, Lord. And we come acknowledging that you are sovereign. That, Lord, that you sit upon the throne. That there is no one greater than you. And that, Lord, that your word never comes back empty. And, Father, I pray for every single person, including myself. I pray that you would fill us this morning with your Holy Spirit. Lord, that as we lift up our hands to you right now, Lord, I pray that you would fill us again afresh. Lord, that this week and even from today onwards, Lord, we would know the kindness and the goodness of your love. That as we're reminded of what Jesus has done on the cross, that you gave your only one and only son for us, that you gave everything how much you valued us and how much you cared for us, that you would give up yourself, Lord, to to die on the cross for us. And we thank you for that. So Heavenly Father, I pray for every single person who's listening to my voice now, Lord, that you would fill them afresh with your Holy Spirit, Lord, that they would fall in love with you, Lord, that you bring them back to the first love, Lord, that we could come and sit at your feet, breaking open the alabaster box and to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord Jesus, we love you. We honour you. We thank you for who you are. And this week, Lord, let your kindness not only flow onto us, but flow through us. And let us go and do the things that you have asked us to do. And give us the strength and the encouragement that we need, Lord, to just walk with you. Let your word become a two-edged sword. Let the shield of faith be raised up in our hand, breastplate of righteousness. Father, we ask this in the most precious name, and that's the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me be filled with kindness and compassion for the one the one for whom you gave your only son for humanity increase my love help me to love with open arms like you do a love that is over light sees the truth all the when they look in my eye they would see you even in just a smile they would feel the father's love oh how you love us from the homeless to the famous and the formed us, you made us carefully, cause in the end, we're all your children, help me
me to love with open arms like you do A love that erases all the light and sees the truth Oh, then when they look in my eyes, they would see you Even in just a smile, they would feel the Father's love my life tell of who you are and the wonders of your never ending love oh let all my life tell of who you are you're wonderful and such a good father Let all my life tell of who you are And the wonders of your never-ending love Oh, let all my life tell of who you are You're wonderful and such a good father Such a good father Help me to love with open arms Like you do A love that erases all the light Sees the truth Oh, that when they look in my eyes They would see you Even in just a smile Feel the Father's love Even in just a smile They would feel the Father's love Once again, we're turning to the Word of God and I'm back in that exciting epistle, the first epistle of John. Uh, so I hope that you've got your Bible with you and you've, you've opened to that chapter, chapter one and chapter two of the first epistle of John. And uh, before I begin to move into chapter two, let me just remind you of the key things I shared with you in the last Sunday morning service. Firstly, that Jesus Christ is real. Secondly, that the life transformation that he has brought to you is real. Thirdly, that the fellowship we have with God through Christ in the Spirit is real. And fourthly, the fact that Jesus Christ has forgiven and purified us from our sin is evidence that he is the only real saviour of the world. No one else, no other God, no other false God, no other prophet, no other priest laid down his life for us. Only Jesus is the eternal perfect sacrifice for sin. Well, friends, as we come into chapter two of this epistle, you'll find there is a term, a very loving term that John uses right the way through his epistle. And you'll see it there. My dear children. Chapter two begins with that. Other chapters begin with that. Other key passages in the epistle begin with my children, my dear friends, my dear children. And what it's saying is that John has grown in a deep affection for the people of God. And there's one thing that I want to share with you because there are key themes in this letter that you will see running all the way through. Words that describe the key elements of John's teaching. The first one is knowledge. 
to know. The second one is fellowship, to have fellowship with God and fellowship with one another. And the third one is love, that we might be vessels filled with the love of God and able to love the body of Jesus, just as John is expressing in this great epistle. Well, let me share with you briefly where we're going in this message so that you can keep up with me. We're going to talk about what we know, hallelujah, but not only what we know, but who we know. There's a term in the world used, isn't it, that someone who is pulling strings to be able to accomplish something in their life that ordinarily wouldn't necessarily happen easily. It's not what you know, it's who you know. So when we're talking about knowledge and knowing God, when John is unveiling this, he's not just talking about head knowledge information, he's talking about relationship knowledge with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is amazing because it is to know Christ that produces eternal life in us. And it is to know Christ beyond the pages of the book that we call the Bible, to him who is the word of God, being real and genuine in our hearts and our lives so that our relationship is not false. Our relationship is not pretense. It's not built on our limited understanding, but it is built upon the foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, who is the word of God, whom to know is life eternal. Hallelujah. So I've just got my Bible open. I'll give an occasional glance down to make sure that I am exegeting this passage of Scripture. But again, the major theme here is that what God has done in your life is real and genuine. You know, as we come to the first point, you'll find it in verse 3. We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. And again, knowing him rather than just knowing about him. He is comparing, John is comparing that which is false, that which is insincere, that which is not genuine with that which is real, that which is sincere and that which is true. Hallelujah. And so we know that we've passed from death to life and we know that we know him who is eternal by the evidence in our life. And the evidence in our life is that we obey his commands. Jesus himself said, if you love me, you will obey my commands. Hallelujah. Well, I want to just talk about this word genuine and sincere for a few moments, because in these days when there is so there is so much confusion when people don't really know what they know and they don't know who they need to know, that which God is doing in your life is real, genuine and sincere. Never let a doubt come in your mind, but stand strong in the faith and the knowledge that you have gained. Let your understanding be lifted by truth and revelation as the word of God is unveiled and revealed in your life. For his deep work of transformation is genuine and real and happening in you. It is not pretense. Hallelujah. You know, when I was in business years ago managing a furniture shop, uh, we employed a really skilled man. And one of the skills that he had was if there had been some damage in a piece of furniture, say the corner of a wardrobe had been damaged, knocked off or had been broken, he had the skill to be able to remake that. And what he would do is he would take some wax and he would melt that wax down and shape it and mold it so that the damaged piece was uh, restored. And if it had grains of wood on it, he had the ability to uh, polish it and finish it with the grains of wood looking as if they uh, were perfect and genuine and real. But no matter what he did in terms of repairing that, giving it the appearance that it was genuine and real, it never was the perfect piece of furniture again. 
And one of this, these words sincere that we're using comes from a Latin word. And uh, the best way to describe this is something that is insincere or something compared with that which is sincere is to use a term, uh, an explanation from Roman times. Uh, very many sculptors in those days were working with marble and stone and, and they would craft something really remarkable. But sometimes if they had damaged the piece, they would fill it with wax and cleverly hide it so that it was an imperfect piece. And they used the word, if it was sincere, then it was unwaxed. It was a perfect piece. And I want to tell you this morning that the work of God in your life is unwaxed. It is perfect. It, that God's love is being made complete in you as you obey his commands. And you'll find that in this passage of scripture. If anyone obeys his word, God's love is made complete in him. And the reason why that is happening in you is that he who began a good work within you will bring it to completion. It's his work. He is perfecting you. He is completing you. He's shaping you, not with wax that is insincere and genuine, but with the genuine work of God in your life. And that comes through knowing Christ, hallelujah, whom to know is life eternal. So what God is doing in your life, don't doubt it, as you are feasting on his word and as you are allowing your heart to be transformed, the work of God is real. The work of God is genuine. And if that work of God is real in your life, you can measure that. You can test that by one key thing. Are you obeying the commands of the Lord? Hallelujah. Are you obeying the commands of the Lord? You know, the law was given to steer us to Christ, to show us of a better way, to show us of a higher way. But it is only through knowing him personally that we move into grace, truth and love that we grow in knowledge, that we grow in fellowship, that we grow in understanding. So I'm encouraging you today to test your life. Lord, let me do that also. Let the test be, are we walking in obedience to God? The Bible says in this passage of scripture, we must walk in the light as he is in the light. Hallelujah. So grow in the knowledge of God and give evidence that that which God is doing in your life is real. Not imperfected, but perfected as you grow in your relationship with God. Hallelujah. Then the second thing I want to remind us of, again, it begins from verse 7 in this passage of Scripture. And I do hope that you'll open the book again this week. We can really study this passage of Scripture. Once again, he begins verse 7 with dear friends. Again, a loving, affectionate term. And he actually compares those who have hatred in their heart with those who have love in their heart. Now, we're not talking about human love here, which is limited. We're talking about agape love, the love of God, which is shed abroad in our hearts. And again, another test. If we are walking in the light as he is in the light, then we will have love, not only for those who belong to God, but for our fellow man. And that love is compared with hatred. Those who walk in darkness do not have the ability to love with the genuine, real love of God that he has placed in your heart. Other religions cannot produce this agape love of God because it can only be brought into us through the perfect love of God. Hallelujah. It's not human love. It's a supernatural impartation of the love of God. And one of the key verses in this passage of Scripture you'll find in the opening verse of chapter 3, it says, Behold what manner of love the Father has lavished upon us 
that we should be called the children of God. So the first key to be able to move in agape love is to have the revelation of the greatness and the the love that God has in all wisdom and glory lavished upon us. Hallelujah. And if we have received that love, his mercy, his grace, his forgiveness, his cleansing, his purification, and his character shed abroad in our hearts, then the natural outcome for us is that we love one another. Hallelujah. 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 Just pause a moment, friend, and again, especially if you're in isolation or not able to mix with those that you would long to be with at this time, remember that God's love for you is not limited. His unlimited love is resting upon you. His love is in you. And in this season, just become conscious of the eternal love that God has lavished upon you, that you should be called the children of God. And so running through this wonderful epistle, we have John's affection expressing the love of God for his brothers and sisters, dear children, dear friends. And if we are walking in the light as he in the light is in the light, through the knowledge of him, knowing him personally, we will have that depth of love for God and for one another. And that's another test that not only are we walking in the light, we are abiding in the light. Remain in him. As he abides in us, we abide in him. We remain in him. And this passage of scripture is tremendous because it says, if we love our brother, then again, it is evidence that we are filled with the love of God. And if we are loving in this way, then there will be nothing in our lives that will cause us to stumble. Those who are walking in darkness, John says, are stumbling around with no direction. They don't know where they're going. But those who know God and those who love God and those who love the body of Jesus have very specific direction. They know where they are going in life and they know where they are going in eternity. You know, many, many Christians in this day uh, are asking the question, Lord, what is your will for my life? They struggle in discovering what God wants them to do. But John actually says here that you will know what God wants you to do. You won't stumble around with lack of direction and fall, but you'll continue by walking in the light and abiding in the light. And as you do that, I want to remind you that if you are unsure about what God wants you to do, begin right here where John brings this challenge. Love your brothers and sisters. If what you do for them is from a genuine heart of love, God will keep you in his perfect will. If you're wondering what gifting and what God uh, function God has for you in the body, the greatest place you can start is to simply love your brothers and sisters. Do everything from the position of love and God will guide you and keep you in his way. Well, the third thing I want to share with you is this. You'll find it in verse 12. And it's a fascinating statement because he explains, John explains who he's writing to. He's writing to the children. He's writing to the fathers. He's writing to the young men. And I understand, we realize that, you know, very often the Bible uses that male terminology, but it includes brothers and ancestors in Christ. And there's a reason for that, and we don't need to change it. And the reason for that is because it is the firstborn son that receives the inheritance rights. So whether we are male or female, in the sight of God, there is neither male nor female. We are one in him. Nevertheless, if God created you female, you are female. If God created you male, you are male. End of story. So, But the reason why I say that is because John actually explains in these verses, ch- chapter 2, verse 12 to verse 14, he is writing to every age range. I love that because it incorporates children, it incorporates young men and women, it incorporates 
fathers in the faith. It incorporates male and female, every one of us. And it reminds us that we have overcome the evil one and that we have overcome temptation and that we've experienced victory in our life. In every stage as we walk with God, our victory and our overcoming is not based upon our own strength and ability, but is based upon the fact that we have been forgiven on account of his name and that he has overcome the evil one on our behalf. Hallelujah. So there's a real pattern of revelation here. Number one, we have been forgiven and purified. Number two, we've come to know Christ, whom to know is life eternal. Number two, we have reached the point where he is completing and perfecting his character and his nature and loving us. And because of that, we obey the truth. And because God has brought us to that place, his love that has been shed abroad in our hearts is able to be expressed in genuine love and care for those who belong to God and those who have yet to find him. And because of this great revelation, John is able to say, in every age range, God is moving by his awesome power to enable us to overcome in all things and experience victory over the evil one. Hallelujah. Great is the love of God that has been poured into our hearts. And then John introduces something that is so vital in this point for those who have overcome. And really it is about maintaining the victory of God's love and the victory of overcoming in our lives. And he uses that, he quotes those verses that you will know immediately. Love not the world. Hallelujah. Let me read this for you because it is so important that we understand what God is saying. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the craving of sinful man, the lust of his eyes and the boasting of what he has and does comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away. But the man who does the will of God lives forever. Hallelujah. What a comparison. I remember when Miriam and I were considering the call of God. And at that time, I was in business in Scarborough. And I came home one Christmas with the realization that my days in business were coming to an end. And very fast because the hand and the call of God upon my life was growing and the awareness that God wanted to me, me to serve him with every hour that I have and every ounce of my strength was really coming to the forefront in my spirit, heart and mind. And I remember coming home and sharing, sharing this with Miriam. And Miriam said to me, I've been waiting for you to make that statement. She knew even before me that God had called me into full-time service. And part of that process for me was the realisation that I did not want to spend my working life dealing with earthly product, but with loving people, teaching people, and challenging people to come to saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And for that to happen, there had to be a genuine shift in my ambition, a a genuine shift in my desire. There had to be a genuine change in my purpose, the dedication uh, of my life, that it wasn't for worldly wealth. It wasn't for producing that which I wanted. It wasn't for producing the things that motivated me for worldly and selfish desires. It was for people. And I think something real happens in your heart as the call of God comes alive in you. When you realise that the knowledge that you are carrying has lifted you to the point where you can say, I know Christ has lifted you to the point where you realise that your own love isn't enough and that the love of God 
enables you to love people that you would naturally want to run away from, but instead your arms are open wide. Has brought you to the point where we realize that our overcoming is because of Christ and by obeying his word. And because we've been brought to that point, we cease to love the world. We're not talking about people here. We're talking about the things of the world. And the reach and the realization that whoever you are, if you fulfill the will of God by living out the word of truth in obedience, the Bible says you will live forever. Hallelujah. Oh, what a miracle today, friend, as we draw this to a close. You know Christ. It's real. It's genuine. It's not been made to look real as if there's imperfection. No, our perfection comes from Jesus. Oh, it's not finished. We'll only be like him when we see him. But right now I remind you that he is shaping his character, his nature and his ways in you. The key is obey him. Secondly, love your brothers and sisters. Love not the world, but love people. Thirdly, remember, he overcame for you. And now he has written his laws upon your heart and upon your mind. There is something inside you that longs and desires to please God. We can measure our love for God. Are we obeying his commands? I pray that this will be a tremendous message that will come alive in your heart. And as you ponder on these things, illumination and understanding will come to you even beyond what I have shared. But I pray that the richness of this truth will be manifest in your life as you continue to serve him with all your heart. In Jesus' name, amen. You are here, moving amen. I worship you.
is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Even when, even when my God is who you are, sweet Jesus. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. Praise the Lord. Uh, we are drawing to a close, but in the last few moments, I do want to share some things that are very, very important. So stay with us until we bring our final prayers. Um, can I just share with you that although we're in lockdown, we as a fellowship now are beginning to prepare for when we can go back and occupy our church premises in Station Road in Harrow. And our hope is that you will be able to join us on some great times of celebration in our complex. Would you pray for us? Because we need the wisdom of God. We want to create a safe environment. We want to create an environment where people can relax and come under the word of God uh, and grow in our experience of Christ. So we need his wisdom. Please pray for us. Secondly, one of the things that is encouraging us very greatly in these unusual times is feedback from yourself. So when we receive an email, when we receive a message, when we receive something on chat, on the service, when you fill out a connect card or a next step card from our website, we are delighted. I'd love to hear from you personally. Send me a message to admin at hicc.org and I will definitely reply to you. Secondly, you can respond on our website at www.hicc.org because people are responding, receiving Christ, and they are filling out next step cards. And it doesn't matter what nation you're in or where you're located, we want to connect with you. One of those reasons for connecting is we're hoping in the future that perhaps you could be invited to be part of a particular teaching program. Uh, maybe you've never been through a discipleship program. That will come as an opportunity in the future. So if we know who you are, that you've registered with us, that is a great way co to connect. Would you also subscribe to our uh, website and our broadcasts because that helps us to stay on the forefront as people search for HIC. And that's something that keeps us at the higher level than perhaps an organisation bearing the same name as us. And then finally, I want to ask you, 
right from the heart of God? Are you in the right place with him? If you were to draw your last breath today, or perhaps pass in your sleep in the night, where would you be in eternity? The Bible makes it very plain. Those who received Christ, his grace, his mercy and forgiveness, by acknowledging their sin, asking him for forgiveness, by confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord, believing in their heart that he is risen from the dead, the Bible says, you shall be saved. I want to say to you, that is the most important decision you will ever make in your life. In keeping with the message you've heard today, let it be real, let it be genuine. Just speak to God as you are. Open your heart, receive his mercy. The Bible says, if Christ is in you, you have received the gift of eternal life and that you will be with him immediately when you draw your last breath. Pray that prayer, my friend, and you will know Christ, whom to know is life eternal. If you've prayed that prayer, we want to hear from you. Fill out one of our next step cards and we will want to be in touch with you to encourage you. Well, our prayer is that this week will be an extraordinary week with you for you, that the hand of God would rest upon you and that as you are able to maybe meet with some loved ones in the way the government has advised us, I pray that you'll sense the release and moments of great joy with your loved ones and your family can be experienced. Now let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the comfort of the Most High will overshadow you. I ask in Jesus' name that the manifest presence of Christ will come in you in a way that you've never yet known. And that as you move through life, whether you're in lockdown or able to be in work or go about your daily chores, that as you move in these new ways, you will love people like you've never loved before. And that through divine opportunities, you will have the, uh, the chance to share your faith with those who are searching for Jesus. I ask in the name of Jesus that the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will rest and remain with you now and always forevermore. Amen. Thank you.